Some of you may have found out that I'm a wizard if you have watched my Photoshop printing workflow video. Let's continue on that theme of me being a wizard, of course, but let's also talk about how you print with a paper that's not made by your printer manufacturer. For example, I have an Epson printer, but I'm not gonna be using an Epson paper to print today. And this would also apply for those of you Canon users too, if you have a Canon printer, but you're not using Canon paper. Specifically, I'll be using a paper by Canson Infinity. Thank you so much, Canson, for sharing me and sending out this paper so that I can run a test on and also make guides like these for you guys. The paper I'll be using for this video is the Edition Etching Rag, which is 310 GSM, so it's a fairly thick paper, but I really love the results that come out from it, and the matte surface is really cool, and it also has no optical brightener. But anyway, I will show you how to go in and download the profile how to set the settings up in the computer and where to install a profile for both Mac and PC. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. The first thing that you want to do when you get a paper that's not made by your printer manufacturer is go to the paper website to download the ICC profile and also get information about the settings that you need to use to set up the printer driver dialog. This way you can set the proper paper type when you're trying to print out so that the ink would get sprayed properly on the paper. So the solution that I'm going to show you is using the profile that is provided by the paper manufacturer. The other way that you can do it too is to use a custom solution and do your own profiling such as using the i1 Studio or the i1 Pro devices by XWrite. Even if you're doing a custom profiling, you should still check out the paper manufacturer website to see the recommendation that they have regarding the paper type that you should set in your printer driver dialog. All right, now that that's said, let's go into Canson Infinity website. And right on the first page there, you have this thing called find an ICC profile. It's super simple. So we'll wait for that to load. And then we'll select the printer that we want. So they support three brands, Canon, Epson, HP. I have an Epson, I'll choose Epson. And for the printer model, Amazingly enough, if you look at the list that they have here, they even support back to, for example, the Stylus Photo R2000-2224. Those printer came out in, well, the R2400 came out in 2005, and the 2200 came out even earlier. So they support printers that are more than 15 years old, which is really fantastic. The printer that I have is the Surecolor 800. I will choose that. And now comes this list of profiles that I have. The paper I'll be printing on, as I mentioned earlier, is Edition Etching Rack, so I will check that. And they have the media setting for different regions, for example, EN, US, and Australia. So my guess is EN is probably England and Europe. Then some of the papers, though, have different settings, which I find it interesting. For example, the Rita Prestige uses Premium Luster in one region, but Ultra Premium Photo Paper Luster in two other different regions. I'm not really sure why. I'm curious about that, so I'll probably find out somehow. But anyhow, on the edition etching rack is Velvet Fine Art across the board, Life is Good, and it's also matte black paper. I'm really only going to select one paper here because I'm just doing this demonstration. However, if you have multiple papers from Canson Infinity, you can just simply check there and it will download all those paper profiles together. Click on download. This is going to create a custom zip package for you and then we'll open it up and install the paper profile on our computer. I am now in my download folder where the zip file have downloaded to. I'll double click on it and I will get a folder that inside will contain the ICC profile. So one of the files in there is a PDF talking about profile, what it is, how to install them, how to print with it, but I will walk you through in this guide. The next folder you will see is ICC profile. So if you have multiple profiles selected, you will have multiple of these files. One thing that you can do is double click on it, but that's not really going to install it. It would just simply launch Color Sync Utility to which you can really inspect the profile, but that's not really the information that we want. So the easiest thing to do, what I'll do here is create a new finder window because if you don't, it will override that window with ICC profile and makes it complicated. So just create a new windows on the side and in the go menu, hold down the option key and you will have the library pop up. Click on library. Go into Color Sync, Profile, and simply just drag the profile across like that, and now you have installed a profile on the Macintosh system. From here, you will launch into the program, and I will do the demonstration in just a moment after I show you how to install a profile on a PC system.
Welcome to the Windows side of things. I'll start out directly on Canson Infinity website where you would find the ICC profile. I'll choose the printer and select the model and then choose the paper I want. For this demo, I'll be using Edition Etching Rag only. If you have multiple paper, you can select that and then click on download. It will group everything together into a big zip file for you to which you then have all the ICC profile that you have selected. This download zip file will go into your download folder. So let's go there. And what you would simply do is right click, extract all. We'll have it extract to the same location. And very similar to the Mac system, you will have a PDF document, which is the exact same file, and an ICC folder, which contains the ICC profiles that you may have downloaded. In this setup, I only have one. So on a Windows side of things, we need to find out where we put ICC profiles. So we'll start out by going to C drive, your local C, Windows, System32, Spool, Driver, Color. And now what you would simply do is drag the ICC profile in to put it or install it in your Windows system. One thing that I recommend for Windows users is that if you go back one folder, you can right click on the color folder and click on sent to desktop create shortcut. This way you have a shortcut to this folder every single time. So you don't have to come and dig through the entire operating system to get to this one folder. So that's one way of doing it. But that's pretty much how you would install a profile on a Windows system. So we're going to move back to the Mac side to finish with Lightroom, setting up the profile and printing out the final image. Perfect. Now that we're back from Windows, a few things to remember. If Lightroom is running while you are copying the ICC profile into the respective folder on each operating system, Lightroom may not see the profile. So what you have to do is quit Lightroom and relaunch it so that it will scan the profile folder again. But from there, you should be set. In Photoshop, it should be updated in real time when you need to go and access the profile. However, if it doesn't see the profile, just quit Photoshop and relaunch it. It's really not a big deal. All right. From here, I'll take this image into print and I have already made a overall workflow on how to print with Lightroom. So I will gloss over some of the terms a little bit and not spend as much time on each one of them. If you want to see that video on how to print with Lightroom, I'll put a link up here. This way you can check that out. All right, I'll start out with the page setup, making sure that I have the proper printer set and also the proper paper size. You want to make sure you do this. This way, the margins and everything are loaded incorrectly so that you're previewing correctly and it will print out correctly. Orientation horizontal, that's good. Scale 100, perfect. I'll go up here and on the left panel in the print module, there's a few things you can change. I have already come in here and set the height to 12 by 18. So that's the size that I want to print on this 13 by 19 inch paper. This is perfect. I'll scroll down and when I print with Lightroom, I always like to include options about the paper type, the sharpening that I do. This way I have a reminder of what I printed at, specifically on those margins, which, you know, I don't really mind it showing up at all because these are more for like test purposes and my own personal use. Especially if this picture goes into a frame, the border's not really going to show up anyway. Next is the print job panel. In here, this is where you would control the printing. I'll start out with the resolution 240, that's good. Print sharpening's on low, media type is set to the correct one on matte. Sometimes it will default to glossy, so double check that. And under color management, right now it's set to manage by printer, which is probably the worst thing that you could do. So we want to select that. But if we notice in here, the moment I click on it, my Canson Infinity profile doesn't really show up. So what you have to do here is click on other. Other will pull up the profile dialog to which now you can choose the profile you want to add. Specifically for this printing, I will include the CIFA E800 edition. CIFA is Canstone Infinity Fine Art. So for those of you that are wondering, a lot of abbreviations is used in profile name to keep it short and precise. Let's zoom out a little bit. And now we're face up with the two different rendering intent. But before I do that, I want to show you one more thing. If you click on the profile itself, and Son does a really good job by also telling you the media setting that you should use for the profile. So for example, it says media setting velvet FAP or FAP. It stands for velvet fine art paper. So if you're wondering what that is. And again, the rendering intent perceptual or relative because this is really more graphical in nature. I will use relative and it's not really skin tone. So I, I don't really mind on this one. 
From there, you can click on print and be on the wild side and send it to print right away. I generally avoid that and just click on printer. This way it will pull up the full printer dialog. And in here, I'll go to printer settings from the middle there where it says layout and double checks a few settings. Front fine art, that's great. Media type, velvet fine art paper, that's perfect for this specific paper because I was printing on velvet fine art already, so it's set to the right one. Print mode, color mode, grayed out, that's perfect. Output resolution, super fine, 1440 is fine. High speed is set and fine is detail set. From here, I'll click on print, to which the printer, it's going to protest saying it can't print because it's telling me that the paper doesn't match the selected driver. Essentially, I haven't loaded the paper in yet, so let's do that. I already have the back feeder open and also the front manual feeder open here and I'll pull the paper out and insert that in. One thing I really like about Canson Infinity is they also put this sticker saying print face up so that you know which side is the, I would say like using the film term that you most inside or the side is actually coded for the ink to go on. From here you would simply just again slide the paper in and hopefully it goes in smoothly, which it does. There's some resistance when it comes towards the back here because you are pushing the paper up the ramp. Line everything up to the left and tap on the printer screen, load. This should load the paper in, which will be great, and then we'll print. One thing that I haven't done in this video is do a nozzle check. That's because I just printed before I started filming this session. If you haven't printed in a while or if you're just starting a fresh session, it's always a great idea to run a nozzle check and a cleaning should the nozzle be clogged this way. You're not spending ink and paper and getting like, you know, banding and everything on there. So remember to do that before you print. Now that this is done, I'll close the manual input tray and also pull this tray open. Press OK. The thing is that once you have this set up on the Epson, it never goes automatically. So I'll pause the print and I'll restart it and it should now take the data and print and then we'll come back and check this out when it's done. So now that the printing is done, let's view this under my lamp. Again, looks really close to what we're seeing between these three sources. I can always go into full screen mode or something that I've showed in the Lightroom workflow video too is to go into develop module and to use the soft proofing to which you can then load in the Kenstone Infinity paper and do a comparison side by side between what you're getting versus what you're seeing on the screen. And you can do soft proofing before you even print or you can also use it afterwards as well to do a comparison as I'm doing now. So now that I have this from my Photoshop printing video where I fly on the Nimbus 4000 around Hogwarts, along with my portrait on the wizard wall, I am now set to be a full-fledged wizard. Anyway, I hope that you find this guide on how to print with a non-printer manufacturer paper or any third-party paper helpful. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload great new contents like this because more is coming. And until next time, art is right. So interestingly, a lot of times what you don't see when I film this is that I have my little companion Lixie here and she's usually on the floor right in front of me so I can see her but she's so short she won't be in these videos. But anyway, I thought you might want to meet Lexi.